Hey, it's Cliff, and I just read an article dealing with BlockFi that I feel like you would probably think is pretty entertaining. So let me go ahead and bring it up here. So that the title says, BlockFi CEO doesn't want to be compared to Voyager Celsius. A few days after BlockFi's warrants were downgraded to worthless, Zach Prince took to Twitter to ask that his company not be compared to his peers. And so let me just go ahead and give you the overview. It says, BlockFi CEO Zach Prince wants to make clear that his lending company, which last week finalized terms for a loan from and potentially acquisition by one of Sam Bankman Freud's companies, isn't like Voyager Digital, which also received a loan from one of Bankman Freed's companies. So, you know, I kind of looked uh, for this dude's Twitter. As you can see here, Zach Prince, he is CEO of BlockFi, and this is what he actually stated uh, in the article. He says, PSA to journalists plus market commentators. It's time to stop putting BlockFi in the same bucket sentence as Voyager and Celsius. Two months ago, we looked the same. They shut down and have impending losses for their clients. And then he goes on further. He says, BlockFi is fully functional across all products, credit card, loans, trading, earning interest, no client losses, and raised interest rates in July. And we have exciting stuff in the pipeline. I cannot believe that he is actually boasting the position that he is in right now, knowing that he was a step away from being in the exact same situation that these guys were in like the arrogance of this guy and he literally thinks the people that are in his investment group are stupid like people that are actually using this platform he thinks you are stupid if you actually are going to believe this nonsense <laughs> like come on so just to kind of bring up some of the issues that they're dealing with it actually talks about in this article, the Private Shares Fund, which is dealing with BlockFi, it says, the Private Shares Fund, which specialized in investing in late stage private companies, gave BlockFi Series E warrants a valuation as of much of 67 per unit as of recently as April. It also cut its valuation of BlockFi's preferred shares to about 20 per share, down from $77 at the end of April. And you can see the chart here. They uh, started here $76. And preferred shared and then they absolutely tanked to twenty dollars so they they are absolutely in the same boat that everybody else is in their stock is getting completely wrecked and i don't know how they can say something like this on twitter like they're in a position that they should be the the only reason why they are in this position is because ftx bailed them out they got lucky that's what it comes down to they they are pretty much the equivalent of getting a bank bail out and then they're gonna brag about the government bailing them out like it, it makes no sense to me whatsoever and actually have a you can actually see here this, the trade that actually went through with ftx it says according to yesco the ftx credit line proposal had a catch for blockfi's existing shareholders it gave ftx the option to buy BlockFi at essentially zero price. If FTX were to exercise said option, it would effectively wipe out all of BlockFi's existing equity shareholders, existing or including management and employees with stock options, as well as all equity investors in the company's previous venture rounds. Arrogance. Like this is this it ah, oh, this is this whole thing is so stupid that a company would actually puff their chest out at a situation like this. However, Yesco said on the leaked call that BlockFi founders Zach Prince and Flory Marquez had a valid reason for preliminary accepting the terms. Of the several emergency financing offers BlockFi received, FTX was the only one that would not subordinate client assets to the rescuer. So essentially, the only reason why this company is standing is because they were given a line of credit which injected equity into a failing business model and then this guy is going to come back on twitter and puff his chest out like this is just the whole thing is mind-blowing if you are in this company just know this is the ceo like this is a this is what you're dealing with and i would highly suggest you pull your money out like this is like this is not safe this is not a safe investment at all and 
he is literally just moments away from pulling Voyager here. And as you can see, Voyager stock is down to 26 cents, you know, from where it was at. And they very well likely, BlockFi could have been in a situation like this. Like, this is not something to brag about. This is not, I understand, like, they need to protect their business model and they want customers to have a good feeling that they're, CEO is, you know, leading the way, but everybody knows like they messed up. All of these CFI exchanges messed up. That's why they're in this situation where they need people like FTX to bail them out. So I don't, they must think we're all stupid. They, they must like, I don't, I don't even know what to say about this anymore, but yeah, I just, I just pretty much wanted to just share that with you because my mind was blown that this guy would actually brag about the position he's in as his stock is absolutely cratering <laughs> like it just doesn't like like what you're you're the biggest loser so now you're gonna brag about that like come on dude really anyway let me know what you think down in the comments and thank you for watching